Okay, so we continue. Let's talk about the purpose of business activity. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Who do you think produces food, delivers and sells it in the supermarket or who owns and runs all these facilities? Who manufactures clothing, builds houses and so on? Well, somebody may say government. Well, it maybe it used to be like that during the USSR time, but now it's not the case. Nowadays, businesses, they produce and deliver all our wants and needs. Okay, so here we're now going to define and actually combine all these concepts. Um, one of the, before we do so, one of, the, one of the biggest manufacturer and retailer of clothing worldwide, globally, is a company that is called Inditex Group. And Pull&Bear, Beer, Zara, Massimo Dutti, Bershka, and all these brands are actually owned by one particular company, Inditex Group. So you can imagine how big this company is. Uh, even if you go to the Mega Silkway, you can see all these brands around you. Now, what is the purpose of business activity? Um, the central role here is a customer, is a consumer. Now, the customer, as we said before, um, different customers have different needs and wants. So, businesses are entities and enterprise that combine the factors of production that take the risk of producing all of these to satisfy the customer needs and wants. So, the central role here is the customer needs and wants. So, you actually try to meet the customer the customer expectation. No business can strive and be profitable in the long run producing goods and services that actually no one wants. If no one wants them, then nobody will pay for them. So the central role here is a customer needs and wants. In the exchange of money, of profit, or here we call it added value. Now, let's define what the added value is. I think to most of you, it's kind of intuitively understandable. However, let's make some definitions and let's dive into some uh, particular examples and see how it goes. So the added value is a difference between the selling price of a product. Let's say that again, let's go back to the mosques example that we have given before. So what do you think the, the average price per mosque is? Well, it varies, but let's say it's 100 tenge. I think it's a fair price. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of 100, more or less 100 tenge, uh, at least in, in Astana. Now, do you know how much actually the producer uh, spends to produce this particular mask? Obviously, it's not only about materials. There are going to be lots of costs. We're going to look at those costs individually and look at those um, different types of costs further, but it, it, it may involve the, the, the cost of materials, it may involve the, the labor force costs that actually are in charge of producing them, and there are a bunch of people who are actually involved, and you have to and you have to transfer it, you have to sell it, so all these things, they actually cost some money. Now let's add them all, and this is going to be the costs, okay, per unit, and let's say it's 30 tenge. Now, the difference between 100 tenge and 30 tenge is going to be the enterprise's um, profit or added value in this particular case. So, so I think it's, it's, it's clear. Now, let's take a look at a particular example. Okay, let's, let, let's say that there is a Samal's bakery. Okay, um, they're selling the, the, the croissants at the price of 20, uh, 500 tenge. They're selling 25 croissants on average. Um, the cost of ingredients and other costs are also given, 100 tenge and 150 tenge respectively. And we're here and we're, we're now asked to calculate the added value. Now, let's give some formulas, let's give some equations, okay? And let's give some definitions. So, what is revenue? Revenue is not profit. Revenue is amount of money that is actually produced by selling your product and therefore the more you sell at a certain price the more revenue you will have and therefore it's equal to revenue is equal to price times quantity 
price per unit. Um, on the other hand, profit is equal to revenue minus costs. So all, all, obviously, all those costs that I've just mentioned, you have to sum them up and, and subtract it. And, and at the very end, you'll get some amount of money, some spare amount of money that you can actually use to further reinvest to your business or just use it for your own purposes. Now, if we are to calculate revenue, then we, we know that price times quantity is this. So we know that every day, uh, Samals is making 12,500 of, of revenue, but it's not profit because we need to uh, look at the costs. And that's equal to 250 tenge per croissant and therefore 6,000. You, you can work it out. Uh, uh, Arithmetically, you can work it a little bit different. You can say 500 minus 250 multiplied by 25 is a bit more straightforward. However, I just wanted to show you the steps um, and I'm sure you can work out the math quite easily. Okay, so it seems that Samal is making 6,000 of profit from, your, from, from her bakery per day. And obviously, I think she's selling some other things as well. Oh, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing, isn't it? Um, okay, so all businesses, they actually, uh, they tend to ask themselves, how do we actually earn more? How do we, uh, how do we increase uh, our profits? And this is about profit, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you, can you suggest ways on how to increase Samal's added value, which is 6,250 by 25%? Okay, now let's look at uh, this particular uh, question um, structurally, okay, and let's, div let's uh, divide them into components, okay. Now, scenario one is you can actually, if you do remember, the revenue is equal to price times quantity, so you can actually increase the price per croissant by 25%, even if you sell the same amount of uh, uh, croissants per day, then obviously by the end of the day, you'll get more profit. Uh, by 25%. You can also try to increase the volume, keeping the same costs, okay, keeping the same costs. You can increase the volume of sales by 25%, good. And also you can reduce the cost by 25%. Now, which scenario should we choose? Well, you, 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 you better look at each one individually, uh, check whether it's feasible or not trying to sell people at a high price but i'm sure you will have some difficulties because people tend to be reluctant about when the thing goes up so the people may not want to pay for the same thing uh a bit more price now realistically realistically businesses tend to combine all these scenarios to a certain extent so you don't have to increase only the price by 25%, maybe you'll be able to increase it by 5%, very gradual change, so it's not a rapid change. And maybe you'll try to find a better supplier of your ingredients at a cheaper price and then reduce a little bit of the cost and, and do some marketing and, and do this kind of thing in order to increase your volumes, which is also a good option um, by which you, you will be able to achieve your goal by 25% increase. Okay, now let's give some equations and definitions again. Now, profit, we've just calculated it, but there are other things like profit margin. Now, profit margin here is a percentage. It's, it's a ratio between profit, money, tenge, divided by revenue, tenge, multiplied by 100. So it's a percentage. Now, uh, why do we need it? At the end of the day, you, you, you do not spend percentage to buy another luxury car, isn't it? You actually use Tenge. So why do we bother and why do we actually look at this profit margin? Now, the thing is, if I say that one company is making 1 million Tenge of profit, is it good or bad? Well, for some people, it may sound very good. But for some, some businesses, it may sound, well, no, it's not acceptable. So in order to see how effectively you can actually retain the profit per revenue. You actually need a, a, a ratio. You need actually a profit margin. So for example, if you if you made a revenue of 100 tenge and then how much of this out of 100 tenge you can actually have as a profit. 
If it's 20 tenge, good. If it's 40, even better. So um, looking at the absolute value of a profit as a tenge is good, but may not give you the, the whole picture. Especially if you're investing your money to a business, you may want to ask, hey guys, how much profit you're doing? This amount, well, sounds fair, but how much money? Uh, what's the percentage? I mean, of, of this particular revenue, how much a profit you can actually retain within the company? And as we all already mentioned, revenue is, is equal to price times volume. Now, break even point. Uh, this is a very important um, concept. This is a very important thing that all businesses, especially at the very beginning, uh, when you try to do some new things and we're not sure whether uh, you'll be profitable or not. So break-even point is point is a number of sales or quantity of your product or service, of your good or service, uh, that you minimally need to sell, be able to sell so that so that you do not have any losses. Okay, so so, so the break-even point is kind of a threshold between profit and loss, and it's in between. If you exceed this threshold of break-even point, then that's that's fine. You are, you are having some positive um, flow. If if you go below that volume, then it's not it's not good. So therefore, we we need to calculate break-even point. We're going to show you how to do that. Um, now, okay. Classification of business activities. I'm going to finish in a few minutes. Okay, so classification of business activities. We need to um, classify them. So here we have three types of them: primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, what is the difference between them? The the difference is primary are those companies, the primary primary businesses, um, the businesses that are involved in the primary sector. Okay, primary sector are those businesses who are doing like mining thing. They extract natural resources like oil, gas, um, um, metals, and, and even wheat. If you are a farmer, then you are in the primary sector. Secondary sector is when you do not only extract natural resources, but you actually do something with them. So you may not be extracting them, but what you do, you actually buy these raw materials like crude oil and then actually refine it in your refineries and then produce some ready-to-go products such as petroleum or diesel or kerosene and these are the examples of secondary um, sector businesses whereas tertiary you do not refine these you do not extract it from somewhere what you do well, you may you may actually just resell them like legit like retailers. Okay, you you buy it from somewhere, then add up your margin, and then sell it at a at a higher price, and therefore the difference you, you get it as a profit. So tertiary sectors are those uh, companies are those companies that are providing services. They're not extracting anything. They're not refining anything. They just are uh, making it easier. They help. All these processes to occur. Okay, let's let's give some examples and, and, and maybe it's going to be clearer for you. So the examples of primary sector businesses can be Cosmegas, ERG, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about this big, big company. Uh, processing can be um, Altentau Kokshitau, if there is anyone from, from Kokshitau, there is a biggest gold mine like Altentau. I mean, it's not the only company. Uh, there are refineries like uh, Atrau and Peze, Shankyant and Peze. Um, so refineries, oil refineries, they're all actually processes, manufacturers. Bipek after, by the way, is an example of a secondary sector business. Okay, tertiary one, I'm sure you know A2, right? I mean, these guys are retailers. They, they, they do not produce anything. They just... They do not bake anything. They just take it as it is and then sell it as it is. They're not like doing anything. They're not changing it. They, they're making it more convenient. Most people say think that um, these retailers they're useless. I mean they they're not doing anything. They're not adding any value. They're just reselling it. Actually, it's not. Can you imagine that you have to go and buy some piece of bread and you have to go ten kilometers away to the bazaar? It's 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 very inconvenient, isn't it? So these guys are also making it a very easy, and therefore it's worth actually paying to these guys. And DHL, La Moda, Wildberries are another 
Amazon, the, the all examples of uh, tertiary sector businesses. Okay, now um, they have different added values. How do we? So primary sectors they they tend to have lower profit margin. Secondary sectors they tend to add up more profit margin. And the tertiary, surprisingly, tertiary sector they tend to have the largest uh, profit margin. Usually, not always. Uh, now, the thing is, then why primary businesses are still so big and why they're so profitable? Well, because revenue is equal to price times volume times quantity. And these guys are producing a big, big amount. So that's why they have lots of revenue. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip this one. We'll, we'll go back to this one in, a, in our seminar. Now, please look at this reference list. The textbook is already available on Moodle. Uh, it's online and the, the password is also given. Good. Stay with us.